I like science because there are some things we can learn about ourselves and our history from studying genetics and physiology and things like that. But when I was a scientist, and I was for many years, I found that most of science is being used for military purposes and for the development of patents for uh, products to make profits. And in fact, most of science is secret. Most scientists sign an oath that they will not talk about what they are doing because it's either military or it's for patents. It's very dangerous. And I came to the conclusion that the world is not ready for science. We have to make a new world in which science is used for our benefit and not a danger to us. Well, today I bring you some good news and some bad news. The bad news is that the American empire and the globalization, the global economy, which it runs, is going to crash within about 10 years. Just like the Soviet Empire crashed in 1989, just like the British Empire disintegrated during the 20th century, just like the Roman Empire crashed thousands of years ago. Because the culture of war is not sustainable. It cannot be sustained. It rises, it exploits, it flourishes, and then it crashes. That's the bad news. Because it means that who's going to suffer? As always, it's the poor who suffer when empires crash. The rich will go off on their yachts. They have enough stowed away somewhere. But the rest of us will be left to hold the pieces and to make something new. But the good news is that that's an opportunity for since the beginning of human history, long before there were states, we have lived in a culture of war. And I want to talk about that with you this morning. When it crashes, we will have the opportunity to change our culture. Because cultures are made by people. Cultures are not imposed from outside. Cultures are not natural products. They are our creation. They're our invention. So we will have the opportunity to invent a culture of peace. Well, what is a culture of peace? We don't know because we've never seen one. We have always lived in a culture of war. It's like asking a fish what is water. The culture of war is our culture. I was talking to Camila from California. Where are you, Camila? About the educational system. The education system. She's a teacher. And she knows the educational system is part of this culture of war. I was talking with Adam. Where are you, Adam? There. Adam. About teaching at the university level and what you put in your curriculum vita to get a job. Well, you don't put the culture of peace in your curriculum vita because you're part of the culture of war. They may not call it that. The, the task of making this culture of peace is a global task. And it's a global task for your generation. So look around you here. These are the people with whom you can make a new culture. Make as many friends as you can here. Keep in touch. Because it's your generation 
that has this task in your hands. For the International Year for the Culture of Peace, we had a, a slogan. Actually, we had two slogans. One was, this was the year 2000. The, 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 the turning point year for the United Nations was devoted to the culture of peace. And we had to have a slogan. So we had two slogans. One was, cultivate peace. With the notion that you don't build peace. I worked in Mozambique. And people in Mozambique said, David, you don't build peace. Peace is not a building. Peace is not a structure. Peace is a way of life. It's something you cultivate. And it has its seasons. It has its springs, its summers, its winters. You sow, you cultivate, and you harvest year after year after year. And the other slogan was, peace is in our hands. You've, perhaps you've seen the, the logo for the International Year, is two hands. Peace is in our hands, it's in your hands. Now, I was fortunate that the Director General of UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, was someone who very much believed in the culture of peace. And so I went to work for him in 1992 and worked there for 10 years on the culture of peace. Not by accident, because UNESCO was established after World War II in order to make sure that there would not be another world war. And they said, the, the preamble to the Constitution of UNESCO says, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember the exact words now, a peace that is concluded between nations cannot be sustained. The only peace that can be sustained is one that is based on the solidarity, the intellectual and moral solidarity of the peoples of the world. That is the basis. That's why it's in our hands. In 1980, I was requested to prepare a fundamental document for the General Assembly, which is the Declaration and Program of Action on a Culture of Peace. No one knows what is a culture of peace. So I had a little team of young people your age uh, I didn't have professional staff. Uh, I had young people who would come as interns and volunteers to work on this program from all over the world, like you. And we set out the task of describing for the UN what is a culture of war and what, what is a culture of peace. And what I would like to do with you now is to recreate that moment when we did that Imagine that you're my team. Now, I did not have a team of 100 young people. I was not so fortunate. I had about 10. But imagine that you're part of this team of 10, and we're going to draft the Declaration and Program of Action for the UN. That's why I put these papers up here, and I wanted you to make, make sure you could read, because we're going to do this together. OK? OK, so we're going to go. Uh, we don't know what is a culture of peace, so we're going to start by describing the culture of war. And once we have the culture of war, we're going to see what is the alternative. Is that fair enough? So we're going to go from cow, culture of war, to cop, culture of peace. <laughs> 